I want to say thanks to everyone who subscribed to my YouTube channel this year. Um, I want to say thanks to those who have reached out to me, who have sent emails with information on some stories. Also, to anyone who has made, you know, left comments offering some advice or um, information on a story that maybe I didn't have in the video. One recent is a, a story that I did about a man who went missing in Knott County, Kentucky, Robert Honeycutt. He was in a bad car accident just before he disappeared, and they provided me with some information about the car accident that I hadn't found anywhere else online. And I just want to say thanks to anyone who maybe listens to one of my videos and picks up on something that I overlooked and offers some information. I also want to do a brief update on the case of Amber Spradlin in Floyd County, Kentucky. As we go into the end of the year, there has been no resolution in her case as of right now. There's a big uproar going on in the community right now because the um, a local media outlet uh, ran a, a brief story about her case and they uh, got some information wrong. They said that she was stabbed in her new home that she had just recently purchased. That wasn't true. We all know that she was actually stabbed and died in the home of Michael McKinney in Floyd County. He, he's a local business owner and a dentist. And this is a known fact. This was reported at the very beginning of this case. So why, I don't know if that was just an oversight on the reporter's part or if someone fed them wrong information deliberately, but the, there's a big uproar and they've asked, people have asked this um, outlet to retract this and to do an update and let people know that they got that wrong because a lot of people are saying it sounds like they're trying to cover up something and trying to make it seem like it was just some random attack of some stranger came into her home when in fact she was actually in this man's home. Another kind of um, controversy that's going on right now is that the restaurant that is owned by members of this family are having a big New Year's Eve celebration tonight and they have a band um, scheduled to play and a lot of people have kind of been reaching out to that band way it is they're still planning to go forward with their normal plans to have New Year's Eve celebration at this restaurant slash bar and a lot of people find that distasteful when the police have yet to make any arrests or name any suspects in this woman's murder and um, this restaurant um, owner is associated with this family and that's just something that's going on in on, especially on the Justice for Amber uh, Facebook group they are really calling for people to be careful and you should be careful anywhere you go um, in, in this day and age there's so much violence and so much so many crimes taking place and this young woman was out with friends that night. She went to this man's home because she knew him. She worked for this restaurant. This was actually the place that she was employed. And they find it distasteful that they are not really even bringing her up and saying the, the people that work there, the employer, they're not saying, you know, this was someone who worked for us at the time of their death. And this is what is causing an uproar with the citizens and at the, another update that I want to give real quick is really not an update it's on the case of Katie White this was a young woman that I did a quick video about who had been seen in Moorhead Kentucky and she had come there from the area of Ironton Ohio and her car was found in Oklahoma City. Now, there's been no updates. Recently, on the original post on Facebook, people were asking for an update. They were asking the person that originally posted the story 
have you heard anything? Have you made contact with her? Has she been found? And there's been nothing. As far as I know, this woman could very well be at home with her family, living her life, going about her business like none of this ever took place, while others are curious. And she may look at it like, I was never missing. I just went on a road trip. Someone got confused. And um, so that's really, there's really nothing else that I can say about that. But I just wanted to come on here and, and give this quick little update on this. I do have some stories lined up that I'm getting ready to start working on. I have several, in fact. I'm going down my list here. I've got quite a few stories that I'm going to be working on over the next couple of weeks and try to post. Um, for those who watched my Christmas time stories, I did quite a few Christmas stories, uh, four or five straight in a row, just like any other day of the week, Christmas, New Year's Day. Um, while these are holidays, these criminals don't always take a holiday crime doesn't always take a holiday that's why people should be on their guard we we see a lot of posts people make about going shopping this time of year and seeing strange behavior from some people this could be that there's that there are people out there um cruising the stores so to speak looking for a victim or it could just be that we are on our our guard our guard is up and that's a good thing um to watch your surroundings, especially, now I had a woman make a comment recently about her brother, now I did a story on him, and I went through my videos, and I found that video, and I'm going to make that one of my first videos that I post in the new coming year, I made this video probably a year ago, and it just kind of sit in my archives, but when she reached out on one of the Facebook mystery, Kentucky mystery, missing persons pages, uh, I reached out to her, let her know that I have this uh, channel and that I was interested in doing his story. So I'm going to be working on that and um, just to, wanted to give everybody a little update. Like I said, I have quite a few stories that I've saved and... Um, I just appreciate everybody who took the time to watch my channel over this year. I wanted to come on here this morning and bring you this story. This The last update that I could find on this was from two days ago. Um, Coopertown, Tennessee. Authorities in Tennessee and Kentucky are trying to locate a 13-year-old Coopertown Middle School juvenile who went missing on Christmas Eve. The 13-year-old has family in Oak Grove, Kentucky and Coopertown, Tennessee, where she goes to school. 13-year-old Faith Ward left her residence in her mother's car on December the 24th and was last seen at the 7-Eleven Exxon on Brick Church Pike in Nashville, Tennessee. The vehicle was recovered in that same location. Faith took with her her white tan dog. Now this is a little small dog. It's a mixed breed. It, she could be anywhere in Nashville, Oak Grove, Kentucky, or Coopertown, Tennessee. Now eyewitnesses say that she was seen getting into the vehicle driven by a black male. And they didn't really give a good description of this man. They don't. They didn't say whether this was a young man, her, age, you know, a teenager or an older man. If you have any information on Faith's whereabouts, contact the Oak Grove Police Department at two seven zero four three nine four six zero two. Now the little dog that she was that she had with her was white and tan. The reason that they're telling this. It's possible that if something happened to her, the dog could have been set out or, um, you know, the dog could end up in a, in a shelter somewhere close by or someone may see this dog, you know, 
so they're, they're encouraged to look for, if they see the dog, to contact authorities as well. If you see a dog that you think could be that description of that dog. a Facebook article here from K WKRN News. Now this was dated December the 30th. This is the most recent update of, her, of this story so you know if there has been anything since then I haven't been able to find it. Um, some of the comments that I'm reading who, who saw her at the gas station or is there video footage um, have the police gone to the gas station and the other local businesses uh, around there for footage to see if they might be able to zoom in on the type of vehicle that she was getting into and um, people are mostly just asking why hasn't there been a description of the vehicle that she was seen getting into if there is a um, video of that at this Exxon station they could do a description of that car. They don't really give any more details. They don't go into any details about whether or not the police searched her phone records. And which, I mean, we all know there are people out there who will pick up young children, young girls, young women out by themselves. But more than likely, this was something that she had planned um, to meet this man. And I don't know how far this place where she lives is from this gas station, but she's 13 years old, and she was able to drive to Nashville and leave the car. So if they could get a description of the vehicle that the man was driving and put that out for people. But this is really all I've been able to find. Like I said, her name is Faith Ward, and she's 13 years old. There's a real lack of coverage on this story. Um, only a few close outlets have really carried this story. Um, the, the comments on the Facebook page range from everything from she's probably all bit already been found and returned home to her parents without incident uh, to she could have been a victim of a sex trafficking ring and this could have been someone who targeted her online Another thing someone said was, is it possible that the police found her either alive or dead? I don't know, because like I said, there's not been any coverage. But they are keeping it silent, keeping it quiet, because they are aware of who she was with, and they are trying to catch that person, and they don't want to tip them off. Um... I don't know because they did not release the model, the make, the color of the car or anything like that. And the area where she was where she was last seen and had left her car, her mother's car, um, was a very populated area with a lot of restaurants and stores and things like that nearby that would have had cameras. So they have to have gotten a description of the type of car she was seen getting into. So I don't understand the lack of coverage. I'm going to continue to look at this story and see if any updates come about. But as of right now, it just stands that she left on uh, Christmas Eve. She drove herself, apparently, to an Exxon or a 7-Eleven station in Nashville and was picked up by a black male in a car. This was the last sighting of her, and no one knows the type of car. And... Um, that's really all I can report on that story. I hope she returns home safe. Thanks for watching.